Great. Namaskar. This is Professor Aman Agarwal from Indian Institute of Finance, and we are hosting this webinar uh, by Professor Deepak Bora, which is titled "The In the Viral War: India's Secret Weapon." Uh, Professor Bora has been addressing our forum for quite some time now. We are proud to have him as a honorary professor of the institute. He is a special advisor to a large number of nations in Africa, even in India. Uh, to Prime Ministers of Lesotho, to Prime Minister of Guinea-Bissau, and also special advisor to Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development, uh, Hill Development and South Sudan, and South Sudan as well. And he has been our ambassador, our diplomat, our representative uh, for Armenia, Georgia, South Sudan, Sudan, Poland, and Lithuania. Apart from some hidden missions, which he must have been sent by the government of India for sure, which are not written, <laughs> which I am for sure. They are there. I know for sure. So, in any case, uh, he is truly our ambassador to Hindustani, as I would put it, a true Bharatiya, and uh, we are proud to have him with us. And he uh, and his showering of love with us. He has agreed to give not only this particular seminar on this topic, but also we are going to start a series of his seminars on trust, uh, which will be there from next week onwards. We will be announcing them going forward. And according to his convenience, we will be keeping those timings as well. Thank you. Uh, I will be passing on the floor to Professor Deepak, Dr. Deepak Bora, just to tell people we have almost 1,200 registrations who have shown interest in him. Uh, unfortunately, emails are not reaching. We are trying to reach them by WhatsApp and messages so they can know that they can come and attend. And we have relaxed these restriction which we had of 100 people to go to 500 people now in our webinars from today beginning to today morning onwards. And so we are very welcome. We are very happy that people are coming over from all over the country and even overseas. Uh, I now pass my stage to Professor Vora. He will be on the spot. I request Professor Vora to begin his presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Aman. It's very kind of you. I uh, delighted always to participate in the webinars uh, because not only am I an honorary professor with the world famous Indian Institute of Finance, but I think you are an outstanding institution. For those who've just joined, or for those who haven't heard me earlier, we are going to spend 30 minutes on a PowerPoint presentation, we call it a deck, in which we'll try and understand why India's response to the Chinese virus has been spectacular. Despite all the shortcomings we have, despite the many demands on our resources, our time and our effort, yet we have probably given a lesson to the world on how to deal, while being a democracy, how to deal with discipline, with dedication and with unity to an issue like the Chinese virus. So if you're ready, I'll start the slideshow. May I, Professor Aman? Okay, Please. I'll put on my glasses, then take them off because uh, sometimes I can see, sometimes I can't. Here we are then. This is a viral war. I call myself an observer analyst. I was made in India in 1951, and now I'm a special advisor in Africa, as well as in Ladakh. One of the things that I've always wondered, and I always remember that when I was born in 1951, India, you know, you would be amazed that 92 out of 100 Indians lived in overwhelming poverty, extreme poverty. 88 out of 100 Indians had never been educated. 1%, less than 1% of women were in the workforce, organized sector, government, wherever. And then our overriding philosophy was fatalism. Kismat hai, hona hai, kya kar sakte hai, to hamari takdeer hai. Today, and I'm quite sure by the time I die, by the time I leave my body, we would have overcome illiteracy, we would have overcome extreme poverty, women would be a more powerful for, um, presence in our workforce and we would have become very very self-confident because i see the change one of the things that we always remember and i'd like to remember is that we have achieved this level of literacy 85 86 percent today and the elimination of extreme poverty to the extent it has not through coercion but through voluntary compliance Let's take a look at the reality first. The a Chinese virus attack and India's response. We have 123 countries. Prime Minister just said this, including the richest. And our neighbors are benefiting from online training. American president, like him or not, 
Donald Trump says we will never forget India's help. More than 100 countries beg the IMF, the World Bank donors, for a bailout. India does not. You know, nations like humans are known by the company they keep. Uh, China's best friends are two of the most trustworthy nations in the world, Pakistan and North Korea. Let's take a look at the mortality. This is today, per million. The world is 33. USA is 211, Belgium 694. Take a look on the left of the uh, table are all the rich developed countries, some also on the right. China says they have only four. Their figures are bogus. I don't believe a word of what they say. Pakistan claims 2.3. We have hit 1.2, which is terrible. We have hit 1.2 and the number of cases in India is growing. So as a health power, what is our most powerful people-driven weapon against the Chinese virus. Why do I call ourselves a health power? Because millions of foreigners come every year to get treated in India. What is this supreme power that we have? It comes from self-confidence. Self-confidence itself is born of self-reliance, optimism and resilience and from compassion, which is part of our civilizational heritage. These are not things that you can touch. These are only things that you can feel. Our confidence first comes from demographics. Median age in India, 28. 65 crore Indians like me, less than 28. 65 crore Indians like you, more than 28. We are already the world's youngest country with the largest producing cohort. Producing cohort means anybody less than 15 or more than 64, he consumes more than he or she produces. So between the ages of 15 and 64, we produce more than we consume. Western Europe, median age 44. The Pope says it's an elderly and haggard continent. My teacher at the Sorbonne, Alfred Sovi, used to predict when I was studying there many years ago that Europe is an old continent of old people living in old homes discussing old ideas. Japan, by the way, the median age is 47. We joke with our Japanese friends that you've forgotten how to make babies. We can teach you. We have the technology. The second thing that we are focusing on, look at this change in India, is education. 500 colleges and universities when I was born. Today, 50,000. Scream and shout all you want about the quality. The numbers speak for themselves. 1.5 million schools, 340 million students, the largest in the world. 34 crore students in our schools, colleges and universities. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of India and our guests for overseas, 52% of this 324 million is our daughters. That's why Bill Gates talks about India's exceptional digital capability. I didn't. He has talked about it. And we find that learning gives us much greater opportunity and equality. The third confidence factor that we are looking at and which I try and understand is economics. We're already the third largest economy in the world. Everybody knows that. PPP terms, US dollars, 12 trillion. Trillion has 12 zeros. Uh, China, of course, in PPP terms is number one. Um, US, number two. We are number three. Japan is number four. Three of the world's four largest economies are in Asia. The West is now, is history. You can find it on the fiction section of the library. Now, what happens to our private wealth. Have you any idea? It's $8.2 trillion. Private wealth is all the money you have in your bank account, you have in your pocket, all the gold you wear in your body, all the money you haven't paid tax on, whatever, whatever. You, When you capitalize the homes that you have, the cars, that's your private wealth. $8.2 trillion. Sixth largest in the world. And then they say we are a poor country. According to the same report, and these are not my figures, these figures come from the World Bank, the UN, the IMF, from the New World Wealth Report, from the Global Firepower Index, etc. What they say is in eight years from now, 2028, the average Indian will hold twice as much wealth as the average citizen of the UK or the average German. Where are we spending this money? Oh, that's wonderful. Number one on looking better. See how handsome I am. I'm still very handsome even though I'm old. Sorry, I haven't had a haircut because the barber is on. <laughs> is in lockdown. So my hair is kind of flying all over the place. Sorry about that. Looking better. 650,000 villages, towns and uh, cities in India. And 15 million beauty parlors. 15 million beauty parlors. Absolutely amazing what we are looking at. 
then we are spending our money on eating better eating better means that you know we have zwiggy piggy tomato zomato mcdonald's all these fellows who deliver to your house grofers whatever whatever amazon whatever these fellows that's not eating better that's fast food in many cases but we are spending money on that and number three is feeling better which means we are spending money on health and i expect this to go up every village not only does it have a beauty parlor but probably has a gymnasium or a workout place where people go who are worried about their health then on studying better communicating better 1.6 billion mobile connections and over 1 billion smartphones then traveling better and living better now all this comes because of our economic development fourth is our hard power the fourth most powerful military in the world no question that we have the u.s is the most powerful followed by russia then china then india and these four mega trends demographic education economics and hard power they give us the power of confidence more than that is our resilience the victory over adversity that india has seen and let me take you back for a moment you know, the milestones in our development, I think I probably want you to see that. But first, let me let me show you another slide. Here it is. This is a cartoon from The Economist. When we talk of India's economic strength, this is about seven, eight years ago. There's the then British Prime Minister David Cameron bowing, genuflecting before Dr. Manmohan Singh and Mrs. Gandhi, saying Britain has no money. Please give us some money. I didn't draw this cartoon. The Economist did. Here, invest in Bavaria. Germany asking for a loan for, for investment from India. I thought it was the other way around. We should be looking for Germans to invest. But here Bavaria wants Indian investment. And here is an advertisement for property in London published in India today in April 2015. Asking Indians to invest in property in London. Probably Mr. Malaiwal or Malaya, whatever his name is, has bought something over there after seeing this ad. Now, every nation sons and daughters of India, ladies and gentlemen, the development of the national spirit comes with what I describe as a renaissance. Europe, 17th and 18th century, you know, the colonial expansion, the industrial revolution, it gave them a tremendous feeling of superiority. We can do it. Fran uh, France, the French Revolution of the 18th century, US independence, the Civil War, 18th, 19th century, the end of the Cold War, I mean, the Americans were totally triumphalist. They said, no one in the world can match us. They said, you know, we are now, the end of history is what Fukuyama wrote about. 911, the American number for emergencies. An American senator said, whenever the world dies, 911, it rings in Washington. That was the reason for America's, what they call it, exceptionalism, their manifest destiny. Japan, the Renaissance came with the Meiji Restoration of 1868, when Japan went from being a shogunate ruled by various warlords into a unified country. Russia, the Bolshevik Revolution of 1919, the Russian, average Russian got up and said, we are all equal. Then came the Chinese communist victory in 1949. That was China's Renaissance. For India, I believe it is the Kargil War of 1999. Measured by the ferocity of our response, the world was amazed, Pakistan was astounded. Do you know something? We talk about the marginalized communities in India. Well, let me tell you that they too rose and fought ferociously, fought effectively for the defense of India. Now, let's take a look at these milestones. First 50 years of our independence. What did, what did we see? Low growth, inflation, foreign exchange shortage. All the time when I went on my first posting overseas, I was allowed to carry eight U.S. dollars officially. We had insurgencies in the Northeast 1966 for the first time. For the first time in our history since independence, and the only time we actually bombed our own population in Mizoram. We had insurgencies in Punjab, Kashmir, Naxalism, Maoist. We had hunger. We had currency devaluation. Political stability was a joke. We had communal violence. You know it all. The oil shocks we had. We had wars in 62, 65, 71, 99. 66, 67 was the agricultural collapse. I don't know if you remember this. If some of you were born at that time, you might have some recollection or ask your parents, we imported 9 and 11 million tons of food from the United States. The rains have failed. Mrs. Gandhi went to ask for wheat aid, food aid, and American newspaper wrote, India's leader comes begging. We were told not to eat on Mondays. All of 1966, Professor Aman, I have slept hungry on Mondays for one whole year. Not that we couldn't afford it. But I felt that this was a national requirement and we did. I was 15 years old then. 
And that country, your country, my country, that begged for food, today the second largest producer of food grains, your granaries are full to overflowing during harvest time. And there has been no shortage uh, of food for people who are under lockdown. Mortgaged our gold in 1991. We had a very severe foreign exchange crisis. We had foreign exchange enough for just two weeks of imports. We asked our best friends, give us some money, give us a loan. They said, we don't trust your economy. Mortgage your gold. 150 tons we mortgage. What a humiliation. My boss at that time was a man called Sam Petroda. You probably heard of him. I walked into this his office. I sobbed on his shoulder. I remember distinctly. I said, Sam, is this the India I'm working for? Put his arm around me, said Deepak, this too will pass. Remember India's resilience. Today we sit on $500 billion of reserves. What happened following our nuclear tests of 1998? The tiniest countries in the world, from Northern Europe or even, I don't know, from New Zealand or whoever it was, started giving us lectures on nuclear non-proliferation and saying they wouldn't support us if we took any loan from the World Bank or the IMF or whatever. We just told them one thing very politely. We said, go home. And then we saw India's national spirit rise. Over the last 20 years, sons and daughters of India, no loans from the IMF, no foreign aid, no appeals for help in natural disasters. We manage ourselves. Tsunami, earthquake, floods, drought. No repeat of the Mumbai attacks of 2008. We give now more aid than we receive. And look at the aggressive acquisition by Indian companies overseas, whether it's that uh, uh, Jaguar car or whether it's the tea things or whether it's hotels, whatever, or whether it's something in South Korea, Daewoo. We are buying them aggressively. 2019, last year, we offer a $1 billion loan to Russia for the development of its Far East. A starving country, as they say, like India, giving a loan to a rich and developed country, that is a milestone. The world is turning on its head. 2019, last year, we reassert the oneness of India. We regularized the status of Jammu and Kashmir. Energy independence. Do you know that 40% of our energy mix today is new and renewable energy? When we formed the International Solar Alliance in 2015, November in France, we said that we commit ourselves to 20 gigawatts, 20 gigawatts, one gigawatt is a billion watts, 20 gigawatts of solar energy. We commit in seven years. People laughed. I was interviewed. I was there. They said, no way can India do it. Well, sons and daughters of India, we did it in three years, four years ahead of schedule. We produced 21 gigawatts. We are taking lead in many other international efforts. Our brain power is universally accepted. You know this. India missed the first three industrial revolutions because we were a colony. But the fourth industrial revolution is on us. And the fourth center for the fourth industrial revolution, the UN opens it in India. The fourth center, not one in Europe. It's in the United States. We have it in Japan and China, not in Europe. People know what is happening. Look, Swachh Bharat, people-driven movement. What did it do? It killed open defecation. Ayushman Bharat, the world's largest state-owned, state-assured, state-sponsored health scheme, giving so much to so many people. And 2020, we are reaching out as we have in the past this year to evacuate our citizens in distress. And we've also shown that decisive leadership, compassion, which is India's ethos, helping two-thirds of the world, sabka saath, sabka vikas, jaan bhi or jahan bhi. You know, the world will remember well beyond 2020 that China hurts. It gives an example of its power. India heals. It shows the power of its example. Discipline, decisiveness and democracy are very effective. Take a look at this book. This book is by my colleague from the American Foreign Service, Alisa Iris. Our time has come how India is making its place in the world. I didn't write this book. She did. What is the result of these changes as India's self-confidence rises, as India's renaissance is underway? Look, stereotypes die very hard. You know, in January 2001, Professor Raman, I was in the Canary Islands. I was posted in Spain. I'd gone there for something. And then the Bhuj earthquake happened. So a radio station came uh, to interview me, sent a correspondent who said, have you come here to ask for assistance? I said, no. Second question, then why have you come here? Well, happy birthday. <laughs> you know, we don't need assistance from the Canary Islands. 2011 itself, 
UK politicians. Google this, very angry when our finance minister said their aid is peanuts, we don't want it. And they were arguing in their parliament that India will collapse unless we get the 60 million pounds or whatever they were giving us. Look, the world is turning on its head. The West is losing prosperity, strength, influence, but the arrogance, ghamand, kahin jayega, arrogance abhi rahega. All the negative stories in the Western media uh, on our response to the Chinese virus, they get Indian fellows to write them. I feel sorry for these Indian guys. Depression, disruption, demoralization, loneliness growing in the old world. India is bubbling with enthusiasm and self-confidence. You know, the UK has a minister for loneliness. I wish they had one for self-delusion also. But the one for loneliness, they are training a young, good-looking people to go and sort of spend time with the lonely people. So I said, if they're rich old widows, I'll also go, please train me. I sent them my photograph. They responded, we are lonely, but we're not that lonely. Well, thank you very much. What is India's rising global profile? Let me take a look at this, and I want you to see what India's rising global profile. 2015, let me take, uh, go back one slide, please. There we are. 2015, yoga resolution, International Day of Yoga, 177 of 193 members of the UN co-sponsored the resolution, the largest in the history of the United Nations. We did not have to take a vote. 2015 July, Yemen civil war. Yemeni's government said we have national, 20,000 national, 40 countries stuck in Yemen. Get them out. The only country we will permit, said the Yemenis, to send their military to evacuate these people is India. Not China, not France, not Britain, not America, not Russia. We only trust the Indians. Let them come. We went out. We brought out those nationals. The same year when I went for the founding conference of the International Solar Alliance, there was this French officer, immigration officer at or, um, Rossi Airport, Charles de Gaulle Airport. He, since I speak French, having studied at the Sorbonne, he saw my passport. He said, Ambassador of India. I said, yes. He said, you brought five, six hundred Frenchmen out of Yemen. I said, buddy, if we made a mistake, we'll take them back. A young 25, 26 year old chap. He started laughing. Then he stands up, salutes me and says, thank you, India. Thank you, India. What a great honor. I mean, I'm six feet two. At that moment, I was six feet eight. 1969, some of you might remember, Google it. We were invited to the founding conference of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. When we got there, they said, sorry, you can't go in because Pakistan threw a fit. We were humiliated. We didn't have the strength. We left. We were, we were not allowed to attend. And then 50 years later, 50th founding anniversary of the founding of the OIC, they asked for a guest of honor. And that guest of honor is our country, India. Look, the UN headquarters, if you ever go to New York, go see it. The UN headquarters has solar energy, solar panels made in India. It was a gift from India, five or six million dollars, and it's called the Mahatma Gandhi Solar Park. So every country in the UN, it has 193 panels, one representing each country, gift from India. Every country now understands the growing power of India. In this year, 2020, we expect over 1.5 billion online transactions. We have set ourselves a target, having achieved the earlier target of 20 gigawatts, we have set ourselves a target of 175 gigawatts of new and renewable energy by 2022, of which 100 gigawatts will be solar energy. Did you say we will not be able to do it? Well, we'll do it next year. We'll show you. Never, never, never again. Ladies and gentlemen, we remember our past. A country that doesn't remember its past has no future. For too long have others written our destiny. Do you know something? We made mistakes. When they came to trade, they stayed to rule. Now we make a commitment to ourselves that we will write our destiny. We will write our future ourselves so that nobody else can write it for us. I touch my ears. I ask God to forgive me for saying that we will do it ourselves. Let me show you something else. Our future as they see it. This is not me. Deloitte does an attitude survey of 2019. In 2019 of what? 16, 17,000 millennials and Gen X. Professor Aman, millennials born after 1985. Gen Z or Gen Z born after 1995. 42 countries. We call this the disrupted, disrupted generation. And it shows Indians of the 42 countries as the most optimistic and positive. Bottom of the list, Japan, China, Norway, Sweden, Finland, all the developed countries, they are not optimistic, their youth. We are. And the top priority for us, yes, of course, have a house, have a car, has dipped that and the other good salary, 
top priority for Indian youth, for Indian millennials and Gen Z. Give back to society. Doesn't it make your heart swell with pride? Goldman Sachs says India's story will be shaped by its 45 crore, 450 million Gen Next born after 1995. Just the size of this cohort combined with their increased economic power with their education will make India's story one of the most compelling in the world. Please Google the Edelman Trust Barometer 2020. Percentage of people who trust in the four pillars, they say, of development, government, media, business, NGOs, India is 79%, the highest. People who feel that they will be better off in 2025, 77% of Indians, the highest in the world. Take a look at this. Where does this optimism and enthusiasm come? Look, I haven't bribed Mr. Edelman to do this, but they've carried out several thousand interviews and come to this conclusion. What does this gentleman see in India? Barack Obama comes three times to India, twice as president, once when he's retired, goes back to America and tells American kids, I have seen billions of people in Bangalore, in India, working to out-educate and out-compete you. He warns them. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of India, what is the spirit of India? Exemplified by this young kid, a Bihari boy, 2021, 20, came to volunteer for the army during the Kargil war. People said to him, son, you can't join the army because both your legs are cut off below the knees in a train accident. This kid pulls himself up on his crutches and says, gentlemen, I have come to fight with the enemy, not to run away from him. This is the spirit of India. Take a look. This is the earthquake in Sikkim, September 2011. Massive earthquake, 8.5 on the Richter scale. 300 landslides broke the road from Siliguri to Gangtok. It's a lifeline of Sikkim. For how long could we send supplies to Sikkim by helicopter? I went there with my team from Indian National Television, Doordarshan, to do a film on rescue and relief. Look at this kid. It's a photograph I took. He's a fellow from Border Roads Organization. See how he's perched precariously. He's drilling a hole. He'll put dynamite in it, blast it. The mountain will recede. He'll repair the road. He'll make it possible for me to cross from one side to the other. We first wanted to get the quickest possible resolution, so we asked some international experts. They said up to six weeks. The Austrians are very good. We asked an Austrian company. They have a mountainous com country. They are very, very good in this. They said six weeks. Prime Minister then said it's not possible, so we asked the Border Roads Organization. I remember I was there. The Director General of Border Roads said, we let you know after our survey how long it will take. He called 20 hours later to say the road is open. Ladies and gentlemen, sons and daughters of India, 20 hours as opposed to six weeks. Some of these boys who you see, this picture here, some of them died because they did not believe in, you know, it was an emergency. They were working um, on, on, on a rapid uh, basis. They did not probably take enough uh, precautions. Some of them, over a dozen kids were killed because there were accidents, the mountain broke, whatever. I met a Sikkimese mother who's... 24-year-old son, worked in border roads, had died. I went to see her. I said, ma'am, my deepest con condolences. Of course, money is not an issue. It's not even relevant. The government will give you, Ministry of Defense, the army will give, border roads will give, Sikkim government will give. Whatever Doordarshan is giving us for this documentary, take it. I wrote her a personal check. Now I said to her sister, is there anything else I can do for you? She said, you are a special advisor in Delhi. Get my younger son. He's 21. Get him a job. He's a graduate. And I said, of course, I'll speak to all my friends who have big companies. I'll get him a job. She said, I didn't say get him a job in a big company. Let him join border roads. My elder son died for India. Why do you want to deny my younger son an opportunity, if the need arises, to sacrifice his life for India? Look at the spirit of this Indian mother in Sikkim. You know, as the water rushed into my eyes, I held her hands. I looked at her and I said, Ma, if I'm born again ever, I would like to be born from the womb of a mother like you, an outstanding daughter of India. And then suddenly I got an answer to a question that had bothered me from my childhood. Why are we Indians? I then understood we are not Indians because we live in India. We are Indians because India lives in us. For the first time in history, this convergence is taking place in one country. 
One quarter of the population is in school, more than in any other country in the world. Ek, enthusiastic, tech savvy, gango. Two thirds of the population, more than in any other country, is in the producing age group. Fastest elimination of poverty ever. One Indian lifted out of extreme poverty every second. And from fatalism and self-doubt, we are now, there's an explosion of confidence. Of course we can do it. We build one toilet every two seconds under Swachh Bharat. We open two bank accounts every second. One kilometer of highway every 15 minutes. We are still building. World's best response to the Chinese virus comes from us. I don't know if some of you are familiar with the law of unintended consequences. You take a particular action, but it can have consequences that you do not foresee. So let me tell you what if, what if, what would have happened to our lockdown if we did not have toilets in every home or at least access to everybody? 60% of India's people who used to go to the fields in the morning or to the riverside or to the lakes or to the forest, what if they didn't have toilets? Would your lockdown have worked? What if we were still a nation of illiterate, superstitious people, old people rather than young, educated, enthusiastic, rational people? What if we were not self-sufficient in food and medicine? There have been food riots in Africa. You won't have them here. What if we didn't have Ayushman Bharat? What if every poor household did not have a bank account? Rajiv Gandhi very famously said, for every rupee that we want to give to the poor of India, only 15 paise gets to them. The rest is siphoned off by middlemen. Now we give direct benefit transfer. We have so much of mobile connectivity. What if it was limited? We wouldn't be able to reach our people. What if we did not have our Aadhaar identity cards so that we wouldn't know who is what? All this, we didn't know when all this was introduced that the Chinese virus was coming, but we did it and these are the unintended consequences. Look, geopolitics is already changing in the last few years before the virus. India has shown its strength of steel. Pakistan has got a lesson in Balakot that it will never, never forget. Malaysia has learned a lesson. Their prime minister, their elderly uh, prime minister who's in his mid-90s said something about Kashmir. We decided not to buy, buy palm oil from them. Their economy crashed. Last month, in the month of April, our purchases of Malaysian palm oil were down 97% from April 2019. And I think now the lesson has reached out to the world that you don't fool around. You don't trifle with India. We eliminated smallpox and polio. We will defeat the Chinese virus. Greater trust in governments is what we are observing that handle it well, decisively, transparently. See, India, Singapore, South Korea, and countries like China that hide or flounder, US, Italy, Spain, UK, Africa, there is a loss of trust. This concept of work, wherever you are, work from home or whatever you call it, gaining traction. Look at the respect we in India have for our health workers, our law enforcement agencies, our scientists. We have rediscovered our strength of discipline, our strength of compassion. We know that the existing global system is inadequate. It only talks of gross domestic product. I think that's a gross way of putting it. Prime Minister has called for a new template to promote human welfare, not just growth. International institutions, globalization, bye-bye, bye-bye, come down. The UN and the WHO, I'm sorry, sons and daughters of India, are agencies whose expiry date is long over. Nationalism is coming up. Self-help is coming up. Health sector will rise very, very fast. Just like yoga, Ayurveda will gain worldwide attention. So as an Indian, have faith and confidence in yourselves. This cynicism here, do not allow that to affect you. You know why? Because excessive cynicism, pessimism, it does not empower you. It paralyzes you, makes you feel helpless and hopeless. Or dar se bohat aage niklo. Because as they have said, dar ke aage jeet hai. Somebody asked the Mahatma, how do I change the world? The Mahatma responded, begin with yourself. Be the change I want to see. One of the African prime ministers I'm privileged to serve. May I just have a sip of tea? Once asked me, I'm a special advisor, Ambassador, how do I solve this issue? I said, sir, I have no idea. I have no expertise in this. I can't say anything. He said, no, tell me. I said, well, if he insists, sir, I would do this if I were you. Three months later, I went back to that country. I called on the prime minister. I went to his house. He was smiling. He said, Ambassador, you may have forgotten, but I remember you asked me to do something. I did it. The problem got solved. And then very slyly, he looks at me and he says, Ambassador Deepak, are you God? 
I said, no, sir, I'm an Indian. That's the next best thing. And he laughed and he laughed. And it's a story that he narrates so often. This is our eternal spirit. Look, when the Chinese virus attacks, you know, in a national crisis, we have shown we are generous, we are compassionate, we work for the common good. This is our secret weapon. Asam nejo para vedi gadiya lagu jesa udhar shari jana vasudeva kutumkar. Jo lo kehde na ki tera ye mera, mein ye apne liye bacha ke rakhunga, tere ko nahi dunga, usko nahi dunga ya, ye chhin lunga. Unki vision badi choti hai. Bharat ki vision beta bachpan se bahut badi hai. From time immemorial, Vasudeva Kutumkan, the world is one family. And today as we battle with compassion, the Chinese virus, I tell you, the Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi is reborn every day. This is my tombstone. I hope that when I leave my body, uh, my ashes will be strewn in the mountains, which I love, and perhaps some in the holy rivers. And below that, the tombstone states, Deepak Vora, made in India, very proudly made in India, in 1951 till eternity, scattered in the dust, silent I remain. When India's bugle calls, I will rise again. Thank you so much for your time. But remember always, this last slide I want you to see, because this is the reality of India. <laughs> So this is it. The party has just started in India. Our Renaissance is moving ahead. And saffron in our flag reflects courage and strength. We have demonstrated it amply. Thank you very much. This is my email. I've enjoyed talking to you. Now, if you have any questions, I'm quite sure that Professor Aman will answer them. But it has been a wonderful experience. Come on, we have done it time and again. We've come out of very difficult situations and we've come out laughing. Some people tell us out of the Chinese virus, there is no way. There is no way out of the difficulty. Look, we are Indians. We'll either find a way or we'll make a way. Thank you so much again for your time and your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would now open the house for questions. First, you're supposed to say thank you for a brilliant presentation. Thank you for the brilliant presentation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it's always so educative. Every time I see there is some information which is always there. You are, uh, you are, you are frozen. I can't see you moving. Oh, just a second. I, I had put you on uh, spotlight. Ah, thank you. Said, now you are moving. Go ahead. Moving now? Okay. Yeah, I'm go saying ahead. that... Uh, you always and uh, each time I always get a new information which is always there. So it's all you're also updating yourself, something new, some new information. Oh, absolutely. The zeal is always the same, and it's amazing. I have Miss Dipti Munda to ask uh, Munda to yeah. ask you a question. Go ahead. Is, is it a voice question or will it be? Will you read out the question? Video, video and voice both. I'll just uh, open all right. the. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I can ahead. see you, Miss Munda. Good evening, sir. Good evening, where, sir. Where are you from? Everyone. I'm from Delhi, India. Oh, originally, Mandal would mean what? No, actually, my uh, I am from Uttarakhand, uh, Kashipur, a small town. And uh, then I I was married to a Rajasthani, and so it's from Rajasthan. We are Dadish Brahmins. All so. right. Go ahead. And uh, like previously, I have joined one more uh, webinar series, and uh, I have heard you first time, and I would really like to appreciate. I feel proud that I am Indian. I don't know a few days back or I might be from La Paz too many so many years I was thinking whether India will uh, be like young, will have the youngsters or not because uh, so many uh, negativities were there in India but yes with your speech I can see that uh, the, I'm proud I'm feeling proud to be an Indian thank you you know ma'am happiness is not a destination happiness is the journey Yes. And India is on the journey to its destiny. And we're a very happy people. We're a very good people. We're a very helpful people. Look, we are standing in the house and we play tali for our health workers. We are burning our eyes. We do so much for them. And those who have to do it on their own, do it. We call them the pain of the soul. They are the pain of the soul. You and me are the pain of the soul. You and me are the pain of the soul. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I would like... Yes, sir. 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 ये बड़ी उम्र तक जीते हैं जल्दी नहीं मरते भगवान भी नहीं चाहता कि उसके पास आए <laughs> भगवान भी अच्छे लोगों की जरूरत है उनको भी इसीलिए तो जल्दी उठा लेता है सबको जी yes. बताएं 
so i would like to like throw some light on the challenge uh, which is means i think uh, till now i don't know whether the government is looking after into it or not because you said that india is a young, uh, india is a youngest country and i do agree that since our majority of the population is having the young generation but somewhere like i deal with my 11, i am teaching in 11 to the 11th and 12th class uh, students and uh, there i found that their interest towards the uh, international universities and getting and settling into the outside india is uh, no, very persistent yeah this is a phenomenon that we see in punjab and haryana so uh, even in, uh, like i am teaching in delhi even the delhi children they want uh, they are very good in studies and they have a, generally they have in their mind that uh, in india the scope is very less all right the, uh, when i have 340 million kids in our schools and colleges 340 million indians cannot emigrate to the to uh, different countries different universities those who don't get admitted and take this from me to the best universities in india the best colleges in india then they go to australia new zealand wherever they want to go canada remains a dream for everybody usa has shut its door because there is no question that the quality of life there today is much better even though the standard of living in india is equally high the quality there is much better they feel this is a hangover of the old system i have a brother who's a doctor 50 years ago went to the us look 50s 1950s 60s 70s till the 80s bhai kisi tarah canada chale jaye but today it is changing amongst those who are aware of what is happening all right and tell your kids they are welcome to go there we have no issues if they can get in admission but go legally go properly go with a high moral sense i being a teacher i feel so bad that my good children also they want to go out and settle settle outside india right. i feel Let that if they have get the education we have 25 million indians overseas we have the largest diaspora in the world so what if a few million more go there if those countries want them why do they want them they want them because we are hard working we are disciplined we are honest why don't they want yes. people from some other countries look at the positive side hai na mam sir they want yes, us sir. because we are the best the others are the rest yes sir but don't you think government has to take the initiative in that also because maybe we are using uh, maybe we are losing the uh, yeah, good very young kind generation. of very kind of you to say government see how much of trust you have in the government now you didn't earlier jo kare sarkar kare acha kya cheez hai aman main batata hu nahi hum bhi kare sir main to apne bacche ko kabhi nahi bhejungi sabse gande hospital sarkari ha sarkari hospital sabse gande sarkari buses sabse gandi sarkari school sabse gande sarkari naukri sabse achhi So everybody has this implicit trust in the government. No, ma'am. You take a decision. Let your children decide their own destiny. They have come with their own destiny. They want to go out. Let them go out. They want to stay here. Let them stay here. India will march ahead to its inexorable destiny. Nothing can stop it. अरे दुश्मन नहीं रोक सका तो हम लोग कौन होते हैं कौन होते हैं ये जो दोष रोकने की कोशिश करें. ओके okay? और अपने yes. बच्चों को बता दो यूनान और मिस्र रोमा यूनान बीइंग ग्रीस मिस्र बीइंग इजिप्ट रोमा बीइंग इटली यूनान और मिस्र रोमा सब मिट गए जहां से अभी तक मगर है बाकी नाम और निशान हमारा कुछ बात तो है कि हस्ती मिटती नहीं हमारी क्योंकि सारे जहां से अच्छा हिंदुस्तान हमारा थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर इंसिडेंटली दीप्ति हैपेंस टू बी आवर एल्युमिनाय एंड माय स्टूडेंट एज वेल No wonder you managed to get the best people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Being very fortunate, very proud of. My pleasure, my pleasure, uh, sir. Anyone else would like to ask a question? Yes. Uh, anyone else would like to ask a question? If they can kindly raise their hands. And also, uh, tell me your name, sir, and where you're from. I'm always intrigued. Your name and. Uh, yes, sir. I'm unmeeting you. Just a second. Mr. Venu Madhav. I can't hear you. I mean, I can't hear him. Uh, yeah, just, can you hear me now, sir? I can hear you now, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. It is my pleasure to see you uh, addressing the the participants, and it has always uh, been an enriching experience. Uh, I have a small question, maybe. Yes, please. Academic, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe it is an academic question. No, no questions are academic, sir. Questions are always universal. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, will there be any change in the metrics in which the the nations are going to be measured here after you know, the corona you know you know um, i personally do not measure a country's progress by this gross concept called gross domestic product yeah i 
have my own thing which is very personal to me i call it a comprehensive contentment calculator okay. i mean if a nation is happy if people are satisfied they're able to then you have the maslow hierarchy you know where you satisfy your needs you begin with your physiological needs then you go to security then you go to belongingness ultimately <laughs> self actualization now they are talking of your spiritual needs spiritual realization so there are different uh, measurements for this regrettably and i say this with considerable uh, thought that only material uh, well being gross yeah. domestic product has sure. become the measure of a country's development that is going to change i hope it does the world is not going to change overnight sir it hasn't it will slip back into its bad old ways but there will be a requirement as your prime minister my prime minister has said that we should have a different metric now it should be about human uh, development not just about material goods and i believe that makes a lot of sense but what i personally believe that it made a, a small uh, virus like corona to make many people to realize uh, the uh, the the essence and uh, the strength of a country absolutely uh, india has shown that we have muscles of steel the hardest steel in the world so it's not a corona virus that is the name that the chinese uh, bullied that fellow in the who to use it's the chinese virus period and globally there is a demand the american department of homeland security has just released a report that they are 90% convinced it originated in a laboratory in china the, everybody says it's in china president trump look like him hate him whatever he is the legally constitutionally elected president of the united states he's asking for several trillion dollars in damages germany is talking of 150 billion dollars australia wants an independent inquiry what's wrong with an independent inquiry the chinese turn around say if you do that we won't buy your beef and your wine and we won't send our students to study there what are they hiding in in one of shakespeare's plays i think in hamlet there is this expression the lady doth protest too much why is she sure. complaining so much who's made an allegation against you why are you suddenly on the defensive i just don't understand this i think if you have something to hide you become aggressive of course you know, when a thief is caught with his hand in the cookie jar he says no i didn't do it you say yes i saw you oh your eyes are bad he becomes very very aggressive i think this is what we are seeing happening in china hope it will come to an end soon or later uh, not not till the end of this year sir we'll be realistic the number of cases in india is rising every day we might sure. say that the rate of doubling has increased well i mean from 1 to 2 is 30 seconds but 2 to 4 maybe 2 minutes 4 to 8 maybe 5 minutes then 8 to 16 to 32 it becomes longer and longer that doesn't mean anything the number of cases is growing and if the lockdown has to be extended so be it sir our capacity our resilience is unmatched by any nation in the world any civilization just to share a small piece of information i have two younger brothers both are scientists one is in usa the other one is in canada and uh, the second one is in, who is in canada working on the same drug uh, they were keeping fingers crossed and uh, telling me exactly one one and a half month back in the initial first phase of lockdown that uh, they were all f- keeping fingers crossed about the indian response to the corona now after one and a half month of the cutdown they all are apprehensive about their government initiatives that they are appra- appraising <laughs> applauding the indian government initiative and uh, uh, they were very appreciative about the disciplined nature of the indians though there are isolated incidences of violating but what, the way we see yes, sir, you know that we are sending two ships to uae and uh, to maldives to bring back our people we are sending aircraft to the us of a the us of a has started registering people who want to come back i say why don't you stay on in the us of a the most powerful richest country in the world <laughs> why do you want to come back to india uh, they'll pay for their fares we are sending up pla- you know when our pilots sir uh, were if, uh, carrying relief supplies to two thirds of the world's countries 128 So they overflew Tehran and Pakistan what did the ATC fellow say guys we are proud of you we are proud of India look at yeah. this sir the world is looking up to you the world looking up to the chinese happy birthday let me tell you something else the european economies which are shattered which are already crumbling they will need to be revived through infusion of young trained manpower Oh. one of the unintended consequences of this and this is also for the lady who was there earlier they are going to ask for indian workers will they take chinese workers well go have another drink if you think so and not many would want 
uh, from countries that follow a particular religion, a very beautiful religion, but they will not want them, whatever reasons, right or wrong. The only country that can supply that trained manpower, undemanding, honest, hardworking, is it. So I see a spurt in immigration, structured immigration. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Uh, could we have the introduction as to where you are from, uh, if you don't mind? So, me, sir, madam. Yes, please. So my name is uh, Venu Madhav, Dr. Venu Madhav. I am from Hyderabad. I'm working okay. in Bharti Vidya Bhavan as Associate Professor in Department of Management Studies. The original hardcore Telugu. You guys are, <laughs> you know, the way Andhra is handling it is just amazing. Anyway, well done, sir. Well done. My pleasure, sir. I'm an Indian first. Of course, I know that. Of course, I know that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, now, Dr. Madhu Bala, just a second. Uh, Namaskar, sir. Uh, I'm a big fan of you, first of all. Uh, my question is regarding yesterday's incident about liquor shops. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are the moral, moral of the people goes and all those things? So, I have, just want yeah, to know mera, what happened. My question is for you. Yes, sir. The media that they are Professor Aman, you can also tell us. How many of our country is in our country? ओके okay, 135 करोड़ सो so, हमारी मीडियम एज 28 है इसका मतलब 28 साल से ज्यादा 65 करोड़ लोग हैं या 67 करोड़ राइट तो ये 67 लेट्स से दैन एडल्ट ड्रिंक्स अल्कोहल तो 67 करोड़ में से कितने गए हैं शराब की दुकानों पे 1000 5000 10000 20000 20 के 1 करोड़ गए हैं ए आई मीन यू नो हैंडफुल ऑफ इडियट्स गो एंड वायलेट द लॉ बिकॉज़ दे आर डेस्परेट फॉर देयर अल्कोहलिक्स इन एवरी कंट्री वी आर नॉट बाय द वे द Uh, we are not the hardest drinking country in the world. That honor belongs to some Latin American country where they consume. The Australians consume five times more beer uh, per person per year than we do. I mean, there are many things about it. But ये थोड़ा media को sensational तो करना ही है ना? तो वो दिखा देंगे अरे कितने का है यार पांच हजार लोग सरकार को पहले सोचना चाहिए तो अगर ना खोलते सरकार खोलती क्यों नहीं है माइग्रेंट के बारे में आपने That's why that's why my question is कि अगर सरकार को ये this is a strategy. कि गवर्नमेंट स्ट्रेटेजी की दे हैव टू रिटेन द लेबर कि मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग जो भी उस लाइन में थे क्यों में थे वो तो तो पीपल आर फ्रॉम लेबर स्टेटस यू नो व्हाटेवर इट इज देयर इज एन इंक्रीमेंट मैम देयर इज एन इंक्रीमेंटल रिलैक्सेशन अब हमको बताया गया व्हाई डिडंट यू एंटिसिपेट माइग्रेंट लेबर तो जो मुझसे मैं तो कोर ग्रुप का मेंबर हूं मैं कहता हूं भाई मेरे चाचा मेरे ताए मेरे अंकल मेरे भाई मेरे दोस्त मुझे वो बंदा ला जो एक्सपर्ट है जिसने कोरोना वायरस लॉकडाउन से डील किया हो कभी दुनिया में एक नहीं है तो कभी ऐसा हुआ नहीं है तो मैं क्या करूं आई एम लर्निंग ऑन द जॉब मैम आई एम लर्निंग डे टू डे सो व्हाई डिड दे ओपन अदर थिंग कि लिखा ही उन्होंने सबसे पहले कि सर कोई इंडस्ट्री स्टार्ट कर देते जिससे कि लेबर उसमें कंसीव यू नो द डिमांड देयर वर अ लॉट ऑफ डिमांड फ्रॉम मेनी स्टेट्स दैट दे वर लूजिंग रेवेन्यू यस दैट्स ट्रू कि मोस्ट ऑफ द रेवेन्यूज कम्स फ्रॉम द टोबैको एंड द लिकर एक अंग्रेजी की कहावत है द बेस्ट इज द एनिमी ऑफ द गुड If you are looking for the best, you will lose sight of the good. So, we have done it. It will not go. If a crore of people are killed, the crisis will be the crisis. We will have to close the liquor shops again. Let's see what happens. Well, I mean, I wouldn't set too much of you know. Little concern. 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 is i think it's critical it's not so much US as compared to the us yeah. and the uk the us is in a far more desperate situation than we are Definitely. we have if we have enough personal protective equipment we have enough testing equipment we know what we are doing people are talking about herd immunity bhai maine herd mentality to suna tha ab herd immunity to mujhe jo kehta hai herd immunity mein ka bhai sahab wo kya hota hai कहता वो नहीं मुझे पता पर मैंने ये किसी अखबार में पढ़ा था तो आप इसको करिए आई यू नो हैव अ होप फिर लोग कहते हैं कि अपने पेट में प्याज रख के सो जाओ तो ठीक हो जाओगे या गार्लिक खा लो तो ठीक हो जाओगे या गर्म पानी से नहा लो तो ठीक हो जाओगे लोग देर आर मोर एक्सपर्ट्स ऑन द चाइनीज वायरस देन देर आर विक्टिम्स ऑफ द चाइनीज वायरस एंड द फेक न्यूज इज सर्क्यूलेटिंग फास्टर इन द चाइनीज वायरस मेरे आपसे अनुरोध है ओनली ट्रस्ट ऑफिशियल गवर्नमेंट सोर्सेज we have the best doctors in the universe 95% ma'am figures sun lijiye 95 pratishad of chinese virus patients in india go to government hospitals kyun yes sir kyun 
रोका है उन डॉक्टर्स पे मैंने अपनी जिंदगी में फरिश्ते नहीं देखे थे अब देख लिए जब मैं अस्पताल जाता हूँ इंस्पेक्शन पे उन फरिश्तों ने सफेद कोट पहने हुए मैंने देखे सर थैंक यू वन मोर क्वेश्चन आई हैव अमन सर कैन आई आस्क इफ इफ वी हैव टाइम गो हेड ओके सर येस्टरडे आई वाच्ड जी जी टीवी तो उसमें दे शो दैट सम यूएस साइंटिस्ट विजिट्स वुहान लैब एंड दिस हैज बीन कैलकुलेटिंग फॉर सम टाइम कि उन्होंने उनको पैसे दिए वो वहां गया नो नो नॉट नॉट दैट द मनी एंड द थिंग टुगेदर टू डेवलप समथिंग ये कहानियां बहुत चल रही हैं नो नो सर द जीनियस में ये था कि द साइंटिस्ट informed us government that the freeze where they sowed those uh, uh, deadly viruses the seal was broken to us time pe us ne why didn't us take uh, 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 any steps now he is blaming mein, china he mein, uh, china didn't know informed mein, us of bala 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 things main main kis desh mein jata hu ki jahan aapke hathiyar pade hain dikhao kehte ji yahan pe ek crore rifle padi hai ek missing hai अब मैं क्या उसे सारी दुनिया के जाके शोर मचा दूं कि एक राइफल मिसिंग है आई डोंट यू नो देयर आर मेनी पीपल क्लेमिंग ऑल दिस द फैक्ट इज दैट द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिड नॉट एक्ट व्हेन इट शुड हैव जब पूरी दुनिया को मालूम था कि ह्यूमन ट्रांसमिशन होता है तो वो बेवकूफ इंसान जो डायरेक्टर जनरल है वो बोलता रहा नहीं होता नहीं होता मेरे को चाइनीज ने बोला नहीं होता जिस दिन चाइनीज ने बोला होता है तो रातों रात बोला हां जी होता है होता है होता है that's yes, you know two or three weeks that uh, were wasted it would have given us enough time jab thailand mein case hua to phir humne usse pucha press conference mein kisne pucha ki tiger ji director general saab ye thailand mein kaise ho gaya kehta shayad wo vyakti china se gaya hoga kehta phir uski patni ko kaise wo patni ko kaise wo patni ko kaise hua phir wo khamosh ho gaya kehta agla question jhoot bolta hai aur agar uski zara sa bhi aatm samman hota istifa de ke kahin ja ke neel nadi ke kinare machhiyan pakad raha hota but baitha hua wahan dat ke Thank you, sir. Yes, Aman. I can't hear you. Put my mic on hold. Yes, yeah. I said. That if anyone else would like to ask a question, please. Uh, otherwise, we'll close in another two, three minutes' time. All right. Please raise your hands. Every one of us is still learning the software, you know, as you know. <laughs> uh, so many of them even not know how to actually yeah. raise the hand. Well, you and I have become experts. Oh, we're still on the way. On the way. <laughs> There are I'm some who are Zoom bombers. We are Zoom protectors. Right. Uh, anyone else would like to ask a question? Then I will. Uh, otherwise, we'll close it down. Um, Thank you, Professor Aman. I think this is fine. It's already five forty or whatever. Forty now. It's been an hour, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this interaction with you and with. Uh, those who've logged in so just to tell all those as we conclude our meeting keep the faith bharosa karo apne aap par apni sarkar par bharosa aata hai jab hum sabit kar dete hain hum kuch kar sakte hain wo humne sabit kar diya hai stay with us we'll overcome this chinese attack hum bahut pehle jab bhi aapatti aayi hai is desh par to tirange ke piche pura hindustan chalta hai aaj chaliye uske piche bata denge in chini virus walon ko ki bharat ki taakat kya hai Thank you, sir. Uh, before we close, I just need to announce what we have for tomorrow. Uh, we have a webinar tomorrow morning at twelve o'clock, uh, as always, on the essence of life and growth. And tomorrow, our guest is uh, Dr. Adkam Bakhmudov, who is from Uzbekistan. He is rector of the uh, institution which teaches all civil servants in Uzbekistan currently, and he has been a vice minister of Minister of Foreign Affairs before. Apart from that, he has been rector of the Banking Finance Academy for many years and a couple of other. universities prior to his taking this role we were in fact uh, we, we we are happy that he is able to join us because this which has got broken in uzbekistan and they have had to move 70000 people you know around from the dam around the dam and secure them and he was made in charge by the president of uzbekistan to look after that particular activity but he is still joining us tomorrow then we also have a technical webinar which will be there on a to z of technical analysis by professor dr saurabh agarwal from puru pre and that would be there as well so you are most welcome to join in that as well i close with that and before i close i must thank uh, professor deepak gora uh, for his showering his love to us and uh, addressing the participants time and again on the issue and hopefully uh, on the 9th we have the next session which is there we still kept the 9th which is there and hopefully we will have
Thank you very much. Take care. Vande Matram. Vande Matram. Thank you. 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 Thank